Hey everybody, Jason here again with Engineer Essentials. Thanks for joining us. Today I'm going to put together a little bit of a video to show those of you that are maybe new to GD&T or new to applying GD&T to a drawing using SolidWorks. Um, that's the software we use here at Engineer Essentials for our courses and our visuals. So I just want to put together a quick video outlining some of the basics that you might need to know in order to put GD&T on a drawing. Um, so this is SOLIDWORKS 2020, uh, that's the version we're using, I think it's SP5. And I'm going to focus just on the geometric tolerances applying to the drawing. I'm going to assume everybody knows how to apply simple dimensions and other basic notes to a drawing. So again, we'll focus on the geometric dimensioning and tolerancing side of things in SOLIDWORKS. So first off, uh, in the annotation tab over here, we have the geometric tolerance. I'll go ahead and click that. And we'll open it up and just kind of explore this window here. This is the user interface for applying GD&T symbols for SOLIDWORKS 2020. Okay, first you can see here we have symbol, a tolerance value, primary, secondary, tertiary, and the number of frames. Uh, first off, if you drop down the symbol, you'll see all the GD&T symbols here. Uh, please note that in 2018, symmetry and concentricity are no longer allowed to be used, but SOLIDWORKS will still allow you to use them. So. Um, be careful of that. Next, you have the tolerance values that you can add into the feature control frame for the size of the tolerance zone. And then primary is going to be your primary datum, secondary, secondary datum, tertiary, obviously your tertiary datum. Um, so then once you start adding the symbol, like position here and give it a tolerance, you can see that it starts populating this preview window. You can add different material modifiers. So if it's a diametric tolerance zone, we can go ahead and add this diameter symbol to the tolerance value. If you want the maximum material condition modifier or the least material condition modifier added to that, you can also add that here. So we'll go ahead and add the maximum material condition modifier. If you want, you can go ahead and add tangent plane, free state, statistical tolerancing, projected tolerance. Um, all sorts of different symbols to modify the feature control frame. And if any of these symbols are foreign to you, please check out our website. Uh, we have lots of great information on how to use some of these symbols, um, especially the GD&T symbols. We have a full page dedicated to explaining all of these symbols. We also have some great courses online. Check those out if you're interested in getting some additional education. Uh, if you want to further refine that position with something like perpendicularity, you can go ahead and add that here. Go ahead and refine it to a thousandth, and maybe we're just going just to datum C. Um, you can do that, and again, you can add any modifiers you want. Um, if it's diametric, you want to make sure to keep that diametric symbol on there. If you want to do a multiple single segment sort of feature control frame, you can come down here and change it to that. Um, you can do a composite frame by checking this. And again, remember those composite and multiple single segments are actually two different ways of looking at this. Uh, they will be checked two different ways and they're completely different. If you want to add modifiers, like say for instance, the minor diameter call out below the feature control frame, indicating that you want them to inspect the minor diameter of threads, the position of that minor diameters axis. Um, you can put that in here. Otherwise, again, if you don't have that, the default for a thread position is going to go to the pitch cylinder. So lots of good utility here. Um, if you're doing profile, you can do um, from point A to point B. If you're trying to further clarify where the profile tolerance is being applied. And again, we'll jump into these while we apply geometric tolerances to this print here. Next, we have the datum feature symbol. Um, we can go ahead and add datum feature symbols to our features on our drawing. Um, there's lots of different ways to manipulate the leaders and you can add different text and modify it just as you would in, in most SOLIDWORKS um, annotations. Great, let's dive right into this part and start adding some GD&T. The first thing I like to do when I'm adding GD&T to a drawing is make sure I have my datum features covered. So let's go ahead and add geometric controls to qualify our datum features. And let's go with datum feature A first, which is going to be this face here. So we're going to go ahead and highlight that face, click on it, go up to geometric tolerance. We're going to control that with flatness, click on flatness. We're going to control it to a flatness of 10 thousandths. 
And again, flatness is not controlled back to any datums. It's only a form control, which is why we're using it for our primary datum qualification. Go ahead and click OK, and you see that it snaps there. We'll go ahead and click that feature control frame. Come up here to the datum feature button, click that, and it'll fill in D. I think if you start fresh, it'll give you an A, but we'll go ahead and override that to A first, and then click OK. Great, so now we've got datum feature A qualified and indicated on our drawing. Let's go ahead and move on to datum feature B, which we're gonna call this side face over here. So go ahead and click that line, highlight it, go to your geometric tolerance, and we're gonna control that with perpendicularity back to datum feature A. And we'll go ahead and give that another 10 thousandths on the tolerance zone size, back to just primary datum A. Okay. We'll go ahead and lock that up here. And again, we want to make that datum feature B using the datum feature symbol. Great, and now we'll move on to datum feature C, which is gonna be this face down here. We'll control that again with perpendicularity of 10 thousandths. Back to datum feature A first, datum feature B second, and then we'll declare this as datum feature C. So we'll drag that over here, go ahead and highlight it, click datum features, and then C will populate in. Great, so we've set up our primary, secondary, and tertiary datum features, A, B, and C, and we're gonna go ahead and locate these four holes back to that datum reference frame. First off, we're gonna give the four holes a size callout to control the size and form using rule number one. So let's go ahead and click hole callout. We'll click on one of these four holes and then we'll add this. Now we've got a dimension for the through hole and the counter bore. The size and tolerance is here, gonna control the size and form, but we also need to control the location orientation. And one great way to do that is add position. So we'll go ahead and highlight that dimension, click geometric tolerance, select position, and we're gonna control that with a position of 10 thousandths back to datum feature A, B, and C. And now that those are cylindrical features, we know that we need a diametric symbol to indicate that it's a diametric tolerance zone. And we're also gonna add the maximum material condition modifier to this. And you can see it populating here and also in your preview window. We'll go ahead and click OK if we're happy with that. But now that we've got the position symbol on there, we also need to make sure we have the true position of these holes fully defined using basic dimensions. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some basic dimensions. The best way to do that is go into your smart dimension, click on the whole features you want to dimension. And now we want to make sure to go in here and make sure that make sure this says basic. It's going to put that box around it, indicating that there's no tolerance associated with this, regardless of how many decimal places there are. Basic dimensions do not have tolerances. Now we know that this pattern is actually a square pattern of four holes. So I'm going to go ahead and add the square symbol to this basic dimension. So next we're gonna move on to adding position to the two through holes here that you see, and we're gonna give it a limit tolerance. And again, because of rule number one, we're controlling size and form with this tolerance, but we need to locate and orientate these features as well. So again, we're gonna use the position tolerance and go ahead and give that a positional tolerance of 1,000th. And again, these are cylindrical features. We'll add the diametric tolerance symbol there. And this is gonna be back to primary datum features A, B, and C respectively. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And again, now that we've got the position symbol on there, we make sure we have this true position of these holes fully defined back to the datum reference frame. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and give another smart dimension back to datum feature A locating these two holes. And since basic dimensions of 90 degrees, zero degrees, or 180 degrees are not required to orientate these holes to the rest of the feature, they can be assumed these true positions are fully defined for those features as well. Next, we're gonna control these two tabs with some size tolerances. We're gonna to say three and a half inches, plus nothing, and minus 20 thousandths. And we're gonna control the inside of these tabs with another tolerance of plus 20 minus nothing. So we'll go ahead and add position of these features 
back to datum reference frame A, B, and C as well. For this one, we're going to give it a 40 thousandths tolerance zone. And since this is not a cylindrical feature, we are not putting the diametric tolerance zone on the tolerance value. One quick trick, if you want to uh, copy and paste feature control frames, you can certainly do that. Just make sure to snap them to the dimension you want and go in and modify them at all if you want to change them up. So we're gonna change this one to 20 thousandths. Click OK. Now we've got a couple of additional features of size that we're gonna control with plus minus dimensions. I'm gonna go ahead and add those really quick. All right, now we got those added. We're gonna go ahead and control this center feature here, this rounded rectangle uh, using profile. So the first thing we have to do is make sure to apply basic dimensions to fully define this surface. And then we'll come in and use the profile tolerance to add the tolerance value to indicate how far this surface can deviate from its true profile. Okay, now that we've fully defined that with basic dimensions, let's hop in there and give it the profile tolerance. Select profile of a surface. We're gonna give that a profile tolerance of 0 0.25 back to primary datum feature A, secondary datum feature B, and tertiary datum feature C. Great, now we're controlling this that center rounded rectangle using profile of 25 thousandths back to datum feature A, B, and C. So now there's a handful of other features like this profile we have here for these two tabs and a couple other features that are not being controlled with any geometric tolerance or plus minus dimension tolerance. Um, so one way to get around that is to use the unless specified tolerance block in your title block. And we have this all surfaces profile of 30 thousandths back to A, B, C, unless otherwise specified. So if we have these features fully dimensioned using basic dimensions and no geometric tolerance associated with it, the default will be apply profile tolerance to those surfaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch of basic dimensions to fully define the rest of these features. Great, and there you have it everybody, a fully defined drawing using GD and T. Um, again, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped you out a little bit. Be sure to visit the website and check out any additional free resources. Uh, here you can test your knowledge with our print reading and gd and quizzes, download helpful wall charts, and access articles written by our training experts.